As an actor, I am fascinated with stories. It's amazing that something like this still exists. And Singapore is a perfect source for this. Whoa! What surprises does it hide? Or mysteries to answer? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Join me, Adrian, as I go on a journey to explore and unravel Singapore's secrets. Here on History Mysteries. At the end of Jalan Selimang, there used to be a grand seaside bungalow. And at the end of Jalan Damawan, there used to be a grand hilltop mansion. Now, both these buildings used to be owned by the same person. But now, they're both empty sites with only a pair of old gates left on the premises. So, what happened to these buildings? And why are these old gates the only remnants? We search for answers to the mystery of the old gates. You know, it's nice to know that in the midst of the densely populated concrete jungle that is Singapore, you can occasionally find little pockets of lush greenery. But what is even more delightful is that in the middle of this greenery, you can occasionally discover little oddities like this. Now, what is this mysterious structure doing here in the middle of well, apparently nowhere in Jalan Selimang in Sembawang? Just east of Sembawang Park, facing Johor Strait, there used to be a Malay settlement called Patempatan Melayu Sembawang. The settlement consisted of several kampongs or villages, of which the biggest and most prominent was Kampong Wak Hassan, believed to have been moved to this location sometime in the 1920s. Before that, the village was situated near what is today Sembawang Shipyard. The last of the dwellings in the Malay settlement, including Kampong Wak Hassan, were cleared by the government in 1998 for urban planning needs. Now the only vestiges of what used to be a community living by the sea is a mosque, the street signs, and this mysterious structure. You know, it must have been really disappointing for the residents to have to relocate elsewhere. But when the kampongs were removed, why was this structure retained? And what does it have to do with this place being one of Singapore's hotspots for spooks? This is Raman, who had a paranormal encounter in 2001 while night fishing with a friend in Kampong Wak Hassan. They were the only two fishing that night and had already caught four fish when Raman's friend had to answer nature's call. But what happened next was something that Raman never expected. About 10 minutes, I heard someone talking to me. It's spoken in Malay language. The voice is telling me that, can I have one fish? The voice sounds the same, just like my buddy. So I thought my buddy was pranking me. My first reply to him, for goodness sake, the fish belongs to you. You want to take, 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 take. After a while, the same voice come again and ask, Abang, minta ikan satu boleh? Can I have another fish? Mm -hmm. So after that, the third time comes in again. Abang, can I have one fish? Abang, boleh, ada, boleh saya ambil satu ikan? Then I was like, wow, I can't hold it anymore, no. The moment I turn, I regret. I saw a dark shadow. The thing just go there, shift away, and that's it. The moment I saw that, I was frozen there for quite some time. Uh -huh. When my friend came back to me and gave me one good tight slap on my right cheek, pop! Then he was telling me, bro, what are you doing on the floor? But that wasn't the end of Raman's story. It seemed that after they returned from the fishing trip, Raman's friend had his own spooky encounter. My friend told me, he said he saw a figure oh. just right behind me. <laughs> so to prove that this thing really happened, I told my friend, hey buddy, why not? Ah? Our box is still not checked yet. I remember we put four fishes inside. So why not we check? whether the four fish is still available inside or mm. not. Then my friend said, OK. Then when I open, I left for you. Thank you so much, Ram. No problem. <laughs> well, one person who definitely thinks that the area surrounding Kampung Wak Hassan and the Malay settlement is creepy is paranormal investigator Noel Boyd. Meet Noel Boyd one of Singapore's most well-known paranormal investigators who has led numerous investigations around Singapore's paranormal hotspots. 
So Noel, I believe you're quite familiar with this, this area. A little right. too familiar. <laughs> <laughs> the history of this place uh, is just rich with uh, folklore and myth and legend as well, isn't it? And mm. a lot of it has to do with supernatural world, would you say? Yeah, I, I think it dates back to the old Kampong days because there have been rumours that uh, the people that were forced to leave, uh, they cursed the land. Right, so oh, yeah, right. and and then there's a lot of reports of the Pontiana being sighted here. From what you know, this kind of uh, activity, these 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 paranormal encounters and all that have have been happening for decades. Yeah, right to this day. Right to this day. And and you yourself have have encountered some of this yourself. Yeah, it's like a paranormal playground. You know, if you are searching <laughs> for entities for spirits, right? Uh -huh. This is one of the uh, the hot spots to come to. How can I resist a paranormal playground, as Noel calls it? This has certainly captured my imagination, and fortunately, Noel has agreed to take me on a paranormal investigation of Kampong Wak Hassan later that night. So what exactly will you be listening out for, looking out for? Yeah, we're looking out for shadows. We're going to try to pick up uh, voices through uh, the microphones, through this camera I have. I got a night vision cam. Right. Yeah. Actually, do you want, do you want to quickly talk, talk me through what, uh, what weapons we have? <laughs> we have this K2 meter. Okay. It detects EMF levels. So, to break it down, uh, if an entity is very close to us, it will light up all the way to, to red. And Ooh, okay. now it's on, and uh -huh. you're gonna hang on to this for the entire night. <laughs> I'm gonna hang on to it. Yeah. Okay. First hand experience. Wait, wait. So, so if a if a so-called entity, like we're saying, is is near enough, it's gonna it's gonna go up the scale, is it? Yeah. Wait, so, so what exactly does it read? It reads uh, EMF, electromagnetic field. Right. So, okay. Uh, as you can see, there's no power lines and all in here, so uh -huh. we can rule that out. Right, right, right. right. So, so it's at its lowest, uh, yeah, very lowest, it's at its um, lowest point at the moment. Which is good for you. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, what else What else have we got? Yeah, so I got a night vision cam here. This is an infrared light, which is going to help us see in the dark. Uh -huh. It's called phantom light. Yeah, it's a phantom light. Appropriately, okay. Okay, so it's just, just armed with that and this and my trusty torch. Yeah. Okay, is there anything that I should look out for? Should I be on my best behaviour? I mean, you should, and you you are on your best behaviour. Just, well, okay, if something happens, don't run. Don't run? Don't run. Because we're going to try to make contact, right? So, don't run. we're going to ask them don't to come run. Okay. towards us. We're going to ask them to touch us. Well, when you say us, you mean you, <laughs> right? Us. <laughs> <laughs> this is the perfect date. <laughs> right, yeah. great. Yes, you, me and the entities. Yeah. Okay. The unknown. Okay. Okay. Ready for okay. This? Yeah. I. I. No. But uh, let's do. <laughs> let's do it anyway. Lead the way. The same. Okay. Knock, knock. Let's try something different. I've been using this cam. Right. I've got another gadget called the spirit box. Right, right, yeah, which is... Yeah. It's in your bag, yeah. right? Okay, yes, yes. Spirit box is in my bag. Once again, the, the spirit box is... Uh, it's the receiver, is that right? Yeah, so it's an AM receiver. what it does is that it either works on AM or FM. We're going right. to put it on AM and then we're going to move it backwards. So it's going to sweep the AM band backwards uh -huh. uh, and it's going to be at a pretty slow speed. So anything that's here that wants to communicate with us will be able to hear. Right. Let me turn this on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That alone scared me. <laughs> that was just thing switching on. Okay, so we just have to listen carefully. So it's just sweeping. So, we're coming to the end of the night. If you want to communicate with us, now's like the best time.
maybe you are a Malay villager. Um, and then you were asked to leave. And then somehow, after you passed on, you decided to come back here. If you are that Malay villager, could you please say something now? You hear something? Yeah, I did. Sounded like Mark. Mark, yeah. Yeah. If you can say Mark again, could you please say it now? Mark. I heard that. Yeah. Would you like to say Mark again? Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Are you looking for your mark? Are you looking for your mother? Or are you the mother? How many of there are you here right now? Ten? I don't know, man. There was something. There was yeah. something, though. I mean, the fact that you said mark three times. Yeah. So, I mean, so... I'm guessing if it, it it's unlikely to be uh, 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 so picking up a radio broadcast that repeats the same sound, yeah. right? Yeah. So that would be a very boring radio station. <laughs> Mark FM. What do you think? It was a female voice. Yeah, it was a female. Yeah, it was a female voice. Yeah. And. It didn't seem to want to respond to your questions about whether it was looking, she was looking for mm. Ma or whether she was Ma. Yeah. yeah. But she seemed to identify her, herself three times. Yes. So, Mark, if you are here, I, I, know, I know you're here. Maybe we asked too many questions. But if you have got your child with you or anybody, ask one of them to come up to this man here to touch this. He would like to see this light up. Do you mind if I try? Please, please, please. Well, I have to say that, that, ooh, it, it flickered one, two mm. to the next. The next one. Are you are you stepping closer? Nope. Okay. You wanna come a little closer? I think they want to speak to us. Yeah. I think um, they've uh, communicated with, uh, with, with us uh, as much as they want to tonight. Exactly. Yeah, so I think that's the end. <laughs> but after the mysterious audio anomaly, there were no further incidents. So I decided to call it a night, not entirely convinced that I had had a supernatural encounter. Though I'm left with more questions on the existence of this mysterious gate structure at Jalan Salima. To find out more, I'm meeting up with heritage blogger Jerome Lim, whose blog, The Long and Winding Road, documents old buildings and historical sites in Singapore. <laughs> okay, so Jerome, can you tell me anything about this, this structure? I mean, it looks like, a, looks like a gate. It used to be a gate into a house by the sea. So it was one of four houses that were here by the sea. Right, well, just, just towards that direction. Towards that direction, yeah. The sea is just, you know, maybe uh, 50 metres away. Right. Yeah. I mean, does it have anything to do with the, the, the kampongs? I mean, the only name I know of, of this place is Kampong Wak Hassan, but I believe that was just one of several kampongs. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So there were actually, you know, a few kampongs along the coast. Uh -huh. uh, uh, one was Wak Hassan. Uh, right here, we had Kampung Persempetan Merayu or Kampung Tengah because it was in the middle of three kampongs. And we also had Kampung Tanjong Irau further to the east. 
So it covered quite a quite a large area? It covered an extensive area between Sembawang Road and maybe uh, Tanjong Irau, which is very close to the mouth of uh, Sungai Katip Bongsu. Right, yeah. right. So so this gate, as you're saying, was actually seemed to be leading into this um, big uh, um, yeah. mansion, would I was to say? You, you can call it that. It was, you know, a holiday home by the sea for a very wealthy person. So, uh, uh, around what kind of period was, was it built? Uh, it was built maybe at the end of the 50s, 1950s, right. and maybe uh, early 1960s, at least that's what I've heard. Right, yeah. right. And when was it all demolished? Because there's very little trace of any kind of uh, ha habitat here anymore, except for this. Yeah, indeed, you know, it, it used to be a place where, you know, you had kampongs and all this seemed to have disappeared except for this gate. Uh, and it was demolished maybe at the end of the 80s. So, Jerome, why was this particular structure preserved and everything else uh, cleared away? <laughs> they must have missed it. <laughs> right. It's a bit uh, hard to miss. It is Actually, a bit hard to miss. Yeah. But I guess, you know, it's a marker of, you know, what was here before. Yeah. I guess, you know, it's a good... It gives you a good idea, you know, of, you know, the people who live by in, in this area. But uh, what, what did the people who used to reside here? Um, what was their lives like? Where did they where did they work? Was it a fishing kind of mm -hmm. kampong? What was it? Yeah. So I think you know there there were people who were engaged in different uh, trades. Uh, but the people who live here, you know, in this kampong tengah, were primarily employed by the naval base. So the British had a naval base in Sembawang. Oh, right. 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 So that, you know, what's left of it today is Sambawang Shipyard maybe. Right, right, right. So that was the naval dockyard. So a lot of the people here were, you know, Malay workers of right. the naval dockyard. I see. Nearing the end of our discussion, Jerome suddenly throws me a curveball. There's a further twist to the story of this abandoned gate, and it has to do with the mansion at Hillview. What is the connection between these two locations? Well, there was only one way to find out. Interestingly enough, both Simbawang and Hillview Estate have had a significant role in Singapore's economic development, though at very different times in history. From the 1800s to early 1900s, Simbawang was characterized by gambia, pepper, and pineapple plantations, which brought wealth and prosperity to Singapore. While in 1965, as part of Singapore's industrialization program to promote economic development, Hillview was designated as a light industry zone. Then known as Hillview Industrial Estate, it provided jobs and created opportunities that were crucial to Singapore's economic survival. But that was in the past. Today, Hillview is a residential area of private condominiums and landed property. Wow. Okay, so we're here now at the top of the hill, yeah. uh, and this is, um, I believe, what was uh, used to be um, Hillview Mansion. Is that correct? That's what people call it. Right. So I don't think it had an official name. Oh, really? Yeah. But it's but it's gone now. It's gone now. It was demolished maybe in two thousand and six. There's nothing. There's nothing else there's there to see. There's nothing there. Yeah. Oh, nothing. but once again, they've kept this this gate structure. I guess this, you know, because it's private property and it does have a reputation. So, you know, it's it's a place that I guess you want to keep people out of. Ah, uh -huh. it's got a rep what kind of reputation? Uh, I think there are lots of rumors about it being haunted place. <gasps> oh, is that yeah. right? I see. Yeah. Okay, so best um, best to keep people from going and uh, poking their nose around. Yeah. Right. So. The building started in the 1980s or so, yeah. and, 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 and then it was abandoned, and when was it demolished? So, it, it was, you know, construction actually started in the mid-80s, it stopped in around 86, and it stood for about 20 years before it was demolished. Inco inco incomplete? Incomplete, yes. Oh, wow. And then, uh, 20 years later... Yeah, it, I, I think, you know, part of the reason why it was demolished, there was actually a landslide. Right. Oh my goodness! Yeah, and again, you know, there are many stories as to or suggestions as to why you know the landslide happened. Ah, uh -huh. right. it's almost like it wasn't meant to be. Yes, it wasn't meant to be. It wasn't meant to be lived in, maybe. So, are there any plans to redevelop this? As far as I know, there are no plans. Uh, it is private property, so we don't really know, you know, what's in the minds of the owners, right? right. But it does have this reputation, so that perhaps one reason, you know. Uh, it hasn't been redeveloped. Right. 
So, okay, so you've shown me um, uh, Jalan Selimang yeah. and that gate over there and, and this one as well. I mean, is, are they in any way have anything to do with one another? It does. It actually belongs to the same person who owned that, you know, uh, the house behind that gate at Jalan Selimang. So it was the former chairman of Cycle and Carriage. I mean, this is like a prime, prime spot. Certainly, yes. I mean, it yes. seems like it's the highest vantage point. Mm. Well, thank you very much. I think uh, we're going to have to uh, take a slow track down. Luckily, uh, gravity will be uh, yeah. helping us. <laughs> Can't travel overseas, need to get away from crowds, need a new mysterious place to explore, or maybe you're just a fan of gates, or are they gateways? Well, either way, there certainly isn't a shortage of mystery here in Singapore. See you on the next episode of History Mysteries.